Hi everybody, welcome to Wednesday Thoughts. I'm Carolina and I'm here with Reverend Douglas. How are you, Reverend? I'm doing good. This is a new room. It's maybe a little echoey here and it feels sort of like an interrogation room. So I'm kind of <laughs> thinking maybe you're going to do a special agent Gibbs thing here and see if I can confess to any crimes, but I'm sure we're going to just have fun. Yes. So today we're just going to react to Christian memes, okay? You ready to have some fun? Uh, I'm always ready. All right. So the first meme we have here, you see Jesus and God. Yes. So dad, it's been more than 2,000 years. Don't you think I should show myself? And dad replies, fine. But you can only appear on burnt toast, dog bats, and cheetos. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you, it's, it's not unusual every once in a while to hear about somebody who, uh, yeah, they, 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 they're toasting their bread and the appearance of Jesus is there and yes. they think it's a miracle and so forth. Um, I haven't heard any stories recently, but I'm going to say something in Latin America. Yeah. It's so often, like it's so right? popular. Yes. Huh. You hear like there was like a, I don't know, the Virgin Mary appear on the wall uh -huh. or like I don't know, Jesus' really? name on the fish. Yeah. Stuff like that. It's huh. just funny. Yeah, I I haven't heard anything either. It's probably not as common in our in our society here. Maybe because people aren't thinking about these matters, um, and, and uh, in Latin America maybe they do more. But yeah, you know when, when I saw that, um, I was thinking about uh, a joke that was told to me by a Jewish man. Um, I think it was a Jewish rabbi, as a matter of fact, in one of the areas where I was pastoring a church. And uh, it goes something like, um, a man goes to his rabbi and uh, all distraught and upset. And so he says to the rabbi, oh, rabbi, I, I just don't know what to do. My son took a trip to Israel and he spent time there and he came back and he was a Christian. I don't know, what am I going to do? The rabbi says, are you kidding? The same thing happened to me too. I gave my son money for a graduation gift. I said, go to Israel, have a good time. He did. He came back and he was a Christian. And so the rabbi says, this is just, this is just too much. We, we need to pray about this. And so the rabbi begins to pray. Uh, God, um, our sons have gone to Israel and uh, we expected them to come back Jewish and they came back Christian. This is, we just don't know what to do. Show us a sign, Lord. And suddenly from the sky, a voice says, what? That happened to you too? The same thing happened to me. Uh, and so when I saw this, I'm thinking, Dad, uh, should I show myself burnt toast, dog butts, uh, Cheetos? Um, I'm thinking maybe in our society, the joke that I told was probably something that people could identify with more. Because I've, I've never seen anything. No. Anything like this. No. <laughs> no. It's so popular on, in Latin it's, America. I'll show you some stuff. Okay, so next one. <laughs> oh, crap. Was that today? Okay, so the dinosaurs missed out on the boat. Yeah. Literally, shall we say. And they weren't there for it. Um, <laughs> We're dinos. <laughs> so what do you think of that one, Carolina? Oh, I don't know. It's funny, but maybe dinosaurs were not. Yeah, were that, not supposed that, to be. that explains why you they know. were extinct. I think uh, they, <laughs> they say it was some big, um, big, big object that fell from outer space, hit the earth, and the dinosaurs were no more. Who would have thought that it was as simple as that? They just missed the boat, so. Now we know the truth. Now we know the truth. <laughs> <You did. laughs> That's what really happened. <laughs> okay. I like that one though. That's cute. Next one. Started taking pictures of churches and turning them sideways. Was no disappointed. <laughs> Pew, pew. Looks like a... It does look like a fighter jet. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like a, a, a country church. You know, I think 
Um, out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm finding myself turning my. Head. I think that was edited. I think it probably. Yeah, that's not it's real. It's not a real church. You know, one of the things, um, did you, I don't know if they do this in Latin America, but they do it uh, in, in America. And they'll say, um, this is the church and this is the steeple. Open it up and look at the people. So that's kind of what they'll, they'll say. So I did a children's sermon once and I said, this is a building that has a steeple. Open it up and look at the church. And all the kids said, no, Pastor Doug, that's not how it goes. And I said, well, yes, that's the right way because the church is not the building, the church is the people. And so um, that's what came to mind with that one. This is kind of like those ink block tests, you know, you go to oh, see okay. the psychologist and yeah. say, so what do yeah. you see? So uh, what I see is uh, a children's sermon that I once preached. I don't know what that says about me psychologically. I'm sure <laughs> somebody, somebody out there is worrying about me. But um, yeah, you know, years ago, they used to put steeples on churches um, as a way of letting people know from far away where they can go for worship. That was one of the things. That's why if you go to any number of different cities, like New Bedford, you drive kind of through the city on the interstate, you look out on the horizon, and what you will see are steeples. Um, and that goes back to the day when um, that was one way of people knowing, where can I find a church? Yeah. So, yes. um, so now this one looks like it could take off and fly away. Yeah, and, uh, it's ready. Yeah. <laughs> I love all those uh, country churches. Yes. You know, like in country or small yeah. towns. You know, they, they tend to be painted white. Uh, I don't know what the story is behind that, but um, you know, that's one of the things that, uh, that they find nowadays to be such a problem is when the paint starts to chip and wear off, which guy is going to climb up on the ladder way up in the steeple yeah. <laughs> and, and paint that? You know? Let's check what else we have here. Oh, this one. When you ask God for a sign and then she brings you to this restaurant, just friends. <laughs> yeah, he's disappointed. Very uh, disappointed. Yeah. He's um, not happy. No. <laughs> That's one way of getting the point across. That one I thought that was really funny. Okay, let's see what else. Oh, this one. Please satanize your hands beer. <laughs> yeah. You wanna fix that? <laughs> yeah, you, de you definitely, yeah, they should have put that one through spell check or at least edited. You know, that reminds me of a time when there was um, this really nice pamphlet that was put out by, by headquarters of a denomination. And it was a way to raise money for missionary work that was going on somewhere in Africa. And uh, so they're describing some of the things that the donations would go toward. The things that, that so people give money, and these are the great things that will happen. Well, uh, whoever typed it up, typed up that says, we have been torturing students in English. What they meant to say was tutoring students in English. So, so can you imagine the embarrassment that somebody had to go through when they realized hundreds, if not thousands, of these pamphlets were printed out? So, of course, that was a, that was a joke. So, so the the story here is: now, don't satanize your hands, but uh, definitely have somebody else read yes. and edit and double check. The Good Shepherd. I got you. Oh! oh. <laughs> How many times does that happen to people? From the pan to the fire, as they say. Um, all the time. All the time. No kidding. Um, yeah, you know, it's like all that work I did in addiction treatment and everything. We always knew that once we help somebody kind of get, you know, go through detox, get their feet back under them, they relapse. Boom. Down they go. So um, it is kind of one of the tragedies. Uh, in this case, it's funny because this little boy, I'm sure, has all day long to do this. So uh, the sheep can do that all day long and he'll just keep going back. But 
but um, mm -hmm. yeah, sheep jokes. And so does Jesus. We keep we get into trouble. Yeah. There's always, there you always, always a... There you go. Yeah. But that reminds me of I got another joke for you. Yeah. So, so I'm, joke, joke telling is not one of my strengths, but so a man was uh, driving down the road and uh, he took an illegal turn. Policeman sees him do it. So the, the police car goes after him, pulls him over, and says to the police, walks to the car, rolls down the window, and says, you know, you took an illegal turn. I'm gonna have to write you a ticket. And the man says, oh, okay, well, I guess that's fine. Um, and the police looks over to the passenger seat, and sitting in the passenger seat is a sheep. And the policeman says, and, and while you're at it, take that sheep to the zoo. So um, a couple days later, the same thing happens. The man takes the same illegal turn. The policeman pulls him over, goes to the car. The windows roll down and says, is it you again doing the same thing? I'm going to have to write you another ticket. And then the policeman looks into the car and sees in the passenger seat a sh the sheep sitting there again, this time with sunglasses. So the policeman says, and I thought I told you to take that sheep to the church, to the zoo. And the man says, well, I did take him to the zoo. And we had so much fun that today we're going to the beach. <laughs> so, so there are all kinds of things. So that, that's what that reminds me of here. So there is my psychological revelation about this one on my ink blot test. <laughs> Actual footage of Jesus washing away my sins. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look how white the sheep is. And look how happy the sheep is, too. Yes. So now, Carolina has a dog named Loki. Does Loki like getting a bath? No. No. Not. What is it about dogs? They just don't like getting a bath. But no, the sheep here, on the other hand, looks perfectly content. Yeah. So, <laughs> washing away my sins. Yeah. Well, and actually, um, that's the nice thing about it. Um, what Jesus does for us. Now we tend to get ourselves dirty again, mm. but uh, Jesus died once for all. He doesn't have to keep dying for us again and again. So we just have to continue to return and find our sins washed away anew. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds funny. Has that fish been tested for mercury? I can't eat that, I'm vegan. Is that bread gluten-free? Oh my goodness, yeah, that's 2021. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, have you ever had gluten-free bread? Yes. Uh, it's really not that good. There was, a, there was um, a church that I was serving and somebody said, you know, we're, we really need to, to make sure that we have gluten-free bread just in case somebody's gluten intolerant. We don't want anybody to get sick. So they agree, all right, so this next Sunday when we do communion, we'll do gluten-free bread. Yeah. That was the last time because gluten-free oh, bread was, was like cardboard. So they decided they would have options for people, you know, um, A and B, so one was gluten-free. So yeah, that kind of takes all the fun out of it nowadays. And unfortunately, that's um, some of our uh, causes that we get all caught up in take some of the fun out of the church. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you open up a door for all kinds of things and you'll never satisfy everybody. But yeah, and then the, the, the communion table, following a communion service, you know, and there's still some cups left over. It's not unusual to find little little boys uh, there at the communion table drinking up the juice. So, uh, church, I don't know. How, how do we get ourselves into this? Hashtag church life. Yeah, that's so true. Okay. Ooh. The, the view from the church sound booth when the mics stop working. Yes. That one is... It's, it's getting close to home. Yeah. <laughs> There's some problems with the sound or with the service online. That's how I feel. As long as I know that the sound's not working, I can speak loudly here. And, I, and I've had to do that on many occasions. Yeah. But, um, 
Yeah, and you know, you, from the pulpit, you look out and you see the faces, and you can usually tell what uh, what people may or may not be thinking. And I remember one church I served, first church I served, way back in the left corner, there was a guy named John. And every time I preached, John just smiled. He was always happy. He just always so happy. And so I developed this habit. Oh, when I used to preach, I'd always preach looking in the, <laughs> in the corner because I knew that I'd have a friendly face. So I go to the next church and I'm finding myself looking in the corner, left corner again. And at that church, there's a man named Mel. And Mel would always smile, always happy with whatever I said. So this really became a habit. It was almost as if my neck was fixed in this position when I preached. Went to the next church, there was this grumpy old guy named Larry, so I had to readjust and look in different directions, so. Um, but now we have face masks. With the yeah. face masks, no, that's true, yeah. that's true. I can tell when the eyes close that something's wrong, but otherwise, no, I can't read their, I can't read their faces. It's a different world. Isn't that, isn't that nice? Before church and after church. So true. At least that's the way it should be. Carlene, you know how many times I've heard people say who don't go to church months, you know, when I do go to church, I'm always glad I did. But then they don't go back. You know, it's, for some reason, it just, you know, really wasn't so bad. In fact, it was really good. I feel, I feel good about it. It's just one hour out of the week. So that's so true. That's usually the way most people are. After church, they feel as though this was a good thing. And, you know, so far, as long as I've been preaching, nobody's been taken out in an amp from, into an ambulance from a church service, so it's a good place to go. So, yes, I think that's the way people should start to view this. Um, yeah. It's always good to come to church, but I think it also... Remember last time we were talking about prayer? Mm -hmm. I was telling you that, oh, sometimes I don't take dedicated time of the day to mm -hmm. pray and talk to God. And it, it requires discipline too, yeah. and commitment. Right. You know? And you still want most of Sunday ahead. My Bible watching me scroll through Instagram during my quiet time. <laughs> yeah, we are easily distracted. But you know, one of the things, um, you know, you know I exercise a lot and all that kind of thing. So um, some days it's just not as good as others. And so what I will say at the end of it is, well, it's not what I did, but that I did. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, I didn't, I didn't do something really fabulous, and it wasn't this great workout. But at least I did something. So it's not what we do; it's that we do. And I think the same thing goes with some of our spiritual disciplines. It's not always what we do, but that we do it and do it with some regularity. And discipline. So, yep, there you go. That's it. Well, thank you, Carmen. This was cl a clever idea, you know, and, and as I say, you know, everybody sees something different in these kind of things, and what we see and what we say about it says a lot about us, so uh, I'm sure people who are viewing now are thinking, okay, based on what I've seen from Carolina and Doug, Carolina is far more psychologically stable based on what she saw and Doug saw. So I applaud you for that, Carolina. Good idea. I'm glad everybody could join us today. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye.